bitches out there, beware. For like the 147th take. <laughs> that last song we played was Wendy and Becky, and we have the man who produced that one, uh, Thelonious Martin, right now. Thelonious, how you doing? Doing good, yeah. We're so happy to have you on the show. I want to just talk about that song for a second because I think it's awesome. That has like the two like the most promising young artists of this generation. What does that song mean to you, and how did that come together? Um, it, it means a lot to do a record like that. You know, Chance is about to go on a world tour, and Joey is looked at as like one of the few cats that really bring real New York back. So it's important to have that record, and it's just right place, right time. Jay Dill is my idol in terms of like what got me into, you know, to start making music and feel like, you know, everything's going in cycle. So we got a whole age of kids, you know, kind of grew up on Stone So and Mad Live and, and Dylan and stuff like that. So you can hear a lot of like, you know, influence over a generation of producers. And it's amazing that people are really like seeking, like, you know, to have the variety, musicality, you know, and making sure, you know, everything's like really fine tuned. I got a ton of homework and stuff to do tonight. And, you know, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, just, you know, scheduling and time and everything. Like, you know, set out time to knock out your homework and stuff. And then, <laughs> if I'm not in class, I got to be in the studio and stuff. Um, <laughs> I always tell this story. I DJ for Vic when he performed to Bamboozle in New Jersey. So, that was also awesome because, I like, we were chilling backstage and I remember going to class like the following week and telling people like yeah since you've been to the band so I was DJing there and I was you know I, I met Big Crit I had like BXB in Mortal Kombat we was backstage and stuff so it was like you know it was like my first taste of like being part of like a festival or something I'm just curious about your creative process and when it comes to making beats what what is it normally like for you? whether it's like a sample based joint like I'll probably play the sample like I probably had a sample for like a week and then by the time I get in the studio with it, I probably listen like two or three, four, like two or three more times, and then like I have a beat in my head of like what chops I'm gonna use, what the drums may sound like. So after that, it's just like I blank out, I go into a zone, <laughs> <laughs> and you know I got I lay samples down, I, I just, like just lay it, I may play a bass line with it, lay down drums. It, I don't know, you have to be there. It's really awkward to try to describe. Loki Ev is one of my favorite rappers, like gonna come up. So this project was like really great for me and chance, like getting to work with somebody I really, really actually like. That's the other, that's the, I guess the other side, when you're like sending stuff to people like via email and stuff, you really get a chance to like, you know, it's kind of, it comes from a different place. You're like, all right, they like these beats or they like this kind of stuff. So let me cater towards that. Um, the action process story is pretty cool. Um, I got a call from RTC who runs Flow Sessions. I actually have a class with him. And he let me know like a week before the like, action was coming through. And I I watched a few action videos and I was like, yo, first video's like, you sound like Ghostface. Second video, I'm like, yo, you cold as hell. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I completely got over. I just realized he was so, so I sent him the best of beat. And I'm in class, and I get called from RTC. He's like, yo, you won. He's like, action like all the joint. You know, come to the studio now. And so I told the teacher, I was like, I got important rap stuff to do. Huh. And I left. Oh I, I went to the studio. I didn't remember that like they were filming for MTV, and so I got a chance to work for Action. My face and name was on MTV too. Wow! Like the next following month, and I got like two or three songs that day. Currency is by far the easiest person to work with that like I've enc I've encountered because literally <laughs> it's almost like every time I'm in the studio, we're shooting 100 100 percent from the field. Hmm. There's never been a skip beat while I've been in the studio with Kern. Wow. I kid you not, there's never been a skip beat. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I've, like, that's, that does not happen. I've, like, if you ever watch the, the um, Black Album documentary, you hear Timbaland scroll through at least, like, five joints you heard later with other artists before you gave the artist you show them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's never happened. <laughs> wow. Like, even, even, like, Timbaland and the whole don't go 100% from the field, but, like, it was really amazing. It's been really amazing, like, working with him and just, like, the whole jet life. All right, so recently you produced the new Mellow High record. How did that collaboration take place? I've, know, I've known High be pretty much, like, a for basically, like, a year after I started producing. Wow. Like, for real, for real. Like, so, like, a year after that, I remember on Twitter, High did that beat. I, no pun intended, no, like, saying words. Um, 
I sent him a batch, and ever since then we was cool. Like, I, like I keep forgetting he's only like a year older than me. Hmm. Like we're the same, like damn near the same age, and so like, you know, we we go back and forth. We actually had like a whole project, like done called Community College, huh. and like he even like did a Facebook video and like it was on the Tumblr and stuff like that. But we never put it out because like our future blew up and then try to keep everything in house. But it was like last year, Dad came into town. And we did a close session with um, IG. Left brain was dead. And so I was out in New York this past summer. They did Peter Palooza. He was hanging with them. And so, hey, it's just been like a gradual, like, network build. And, like, those are, like, my homies. Like, Tomo and IG are, like, really good friends of mine. That's how it really came to be. Like, I was just sending them beats and stuff and, like, just chopping up with them and then they did that song. <laughs> What's it like hanging out with those guys? Because those guys, you see in their videos, they're they're absolutely crazy. Are they as crazy in person? They're hilarious. <laughs> they're not like that. Cause they're not that crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like even with Action Rock, like there's definitely a, a sense of like character that comes along with like being like a, a public figure. So Thelonious, what can we besides uh, the Temptations, obviously with Evan Holt, what do we got go- looking forward to in the future? Ooh, I can't wait for this question. <laughs> <laughs> so, We're getting there. <laughs> so we got Temptations dropping on the 8th. Um, that project with Wretch, Wretchy Porter, coming out in November called Polo Sporting Good. Then my artist, my artist, Topaz Jones, he just debuted, debuted his video on Complex. So I have a couple drinks on his, his album that's coming out soon. And my other artist, St. Ross, uh, we just debuted one of his songs on Mass Pill a couple weeks ago and we're working on his project right now and you know, everybody can like get the features and stuff and like wrapping up visuals and stuff. I'm supposed to have my first final release next year. Ooh. Oh, got oh man. It's my first like new project. It might, be in, it might be another vinyl release before that. I don't know. I got to talk to some people. It definitely was a young visionary. And, uh, but I, I linked up with Joey first. Like Smoke Business tweeted a video of Joey's and I was like, oh, this is the sixth one? Yo, I just work with like, it. Like, I told like, I'm going to share that like, the next two or three days looking for his contact on Facebook or something to talk to him. And me and him were talking back and forth before he even blew up. Like, I'm talking like a thousand Twitter followers. Like, huh. wow. Like, yeah, like maybe like eight months before we even did our first record. And, you know, so it was organic in a sense. And then I mean, they came to Chicago and it was the first time meeting Joey, so he was like, oh, snap. You and Kevin, sent, you and Kevin like, contacted me, sent me beats and stuff. And Steve was with him, too, so it was just like, yeah, I met him for that one time. And then I sent him some joints after that, and that's how King came about. And so that's like kind of like my pro era story, and it's kind of like, it was grim, it was like, I just met him, and then, like, the tape came out, and he had passed, and I was like, whoa. Yep. That was like, the first time like, that's ever happened to me, like, I meet somebody. And then look up and they call like they bug me out for a couple of days. Now going forth, um, who's the one person you really want to collaborate with in the future? Because you work with a lot of people now. Um, Rock Marciano. I want to work with Don Kenny. I want, want to work with Casey Veggies. I, I want to work with Mac Miller too. I, I had him on the song Pack I want to work like in the studio with him. There's a lot of like you guys want to hear a lot of new stuff coming out soon. I'm like, damn, the longest did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing. It's going to be very multifaceted, and I hope y'all ready for it. Thelonious, thank you so much for your time and best of luck in the future and future endeavors. Peace and love to y'all. Peace. Peace. Thank you. This is the best blueprint.